Welcome everyone to another discussion with uh, experts around the world who are experiencing this significant disruption that all of you have going on in your daily lives and in your classrooms. I'm very blessed today to have an opportunity to chat with uh, someone who has just terrific insight and overview on the experiences of digital technologies and even just societal inequalities on the lived experience of the Aboriginal population. Uh, Irabina, welcome here. It's great to have a bit of time with you. Can you share a bit about yourself and your background? Uh, I am Professor Lester Irabina Rigney. Uh, I am a, a professor of education um, and uh, of minorities across the Pacific. I am expert in Indigenous epistemologies and schooling of minorities across the Pacific. Um, I've been uh, researching um, uh, teacher education and the education of the, the Indigenous child for about 30 years now and have um, uh, it, one of the leading world thinkers on culturally responsive pedagogies. And we're just um, theorizing at the moment the digital space of, the, of a culturally, what a culturally responsive school and a culturally responsive teaching pedagogy looks like. So I'm really humbled and honored to be here today with you. Well, and thank you for that. And, and I think the, the humble and the honor belongs to us as, as listeners to your insight. Now, I know right now, everyone is impacted by COVID. It is a crisis with a very unclear horizon. I know you're in a situation right now that's very reflective of your cultural background and roots. Uh, could you share a bit about where you are physically right now and, and why you are there? Okay, it's a really, really good question. Um, uh, what you can see at the back of in my background is a, uh, and um, uh, I'm an Arunga Narangeri Gaman, and I am the inheritor of 60,000 years of wisdom and knowledges. We are, my community, the Narunga people, um, uh, have a, uh, a, a hunomic, uh, hunomic uh, uh, genome uh, marker, 168, which means we are the first um, peoples to leave out of Africa theory, and we are the oldest people on the planet. So our genetic code 168 tells us that we are the oldest people in the, in the world and we left Africa and arrived in Australia. And uh, as the Aboriginal nations, some of our knowledges are, um, uh, are well and truly 80,000 years old. So um, the, the painting behind you is a Arnold Bidinyara, Yangonanyara painting of children walking these long journeys. The children are all sitting in a circle and the, the long lines represent these long trails of about 80,000 years of knowledge. So, um, uh, so curriculum and pedagogy didn't arrive on a boat in Australia. It was here for 80,000 years. And so the, 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 the one thing that the Pacific and the minorities across the Pacific are trying to understand is what does the digital future look like for the learner in the Pacific? And um, we know that the majority of people in the Pacific are brown and uh, they want to know what does a digital future look like. And so um, I think that that's a really good part, part to, uh, a point to start. So there are three questions that the Pacific is asking of the world. What does, what does the image of a digital school look like? What will the image of school change? What's the image of the digital learner or the child? Um, what's the image of the digital teacher? What does that look like in a future? And um, uh, our people uh, across the Pacific speak a um, hundred languages, including um, their, their linguistic languages. But we speak, we have a hundred languages, our cultural language, our, our understanding of the sea, our understandings of islands. Um, so we bring all of these languages into the school setting. So how would these hundred languages that each child carries into the school, into the digital schooling future, how will that carry the weight of our 80,000 years of wisdom? And then lastly, um, there's a real famous uh, scholar called Digital uh, uh, um, uh, Epeli Hawefa. 
and he is uh, he's a Pacifican scholar, and he writes that our knowledges um, should not be be judged in the Pacific by the size of our islands, but by the size of our oceans. That how do we take this Pacific knowledge and put it into the digital world that carries the weight of our aspirations, values, and beliefs? Um, that can benefit all society and humanities because the people in the Pacific have, have uh, dealt with climate change for thousands of years and have this huge big knowledge reservoir. So um, we're trying to do think about these provocations for what a digital future looks like for minorities. Uh, yeah, that's a terrific point of focus because uh, and I know right now you, you were uh, due to COVID. You're you're back in in your community, basically closed, if you will, if that's quite the right word to use, because you're preserving the sort of the physical instantiation of that incredible depth of knowledge that goes back tens of thousands of years. Could you share more about that? So at the moment, COVID has forced our communities to take action on their own behalf. Um, my community is two hours uh, west of Ad the metropolitan Adelaide and um, our community is around about a thousand, um, a thousand uh, members on a mission uh, which is the size of roughly 15 kilometres by 15 kilometres. And uh, at the time of colonisation, we lived uh, um, uh, uh, on a huge expanse of land, but uh, when the when we were colonised, our mission eventually ended up being reduced to 15 kilometres by 15 kilometres. Now we have something like about 70 elders in our community that are that are holders of this ancient knowledges, this ancient wisdom that all humanity need to benefit from. Um, these are people that carry the knowledges at the time of colonization and some of them uh, at the time when um, the uh, Gondwana and, uh, you know, um, the last ice age. So they're very, very important to humanity, but they're important to us. Um, we see the statistics in Italy and New York that 700 to 1,000 people died a day. That would mean that if COVID-19 got into one of our communities, particularly mine, all of our elders would be dead in two days. So, yeah, and the, the sort of the catastrophic loss of knowledge and wisdom that that entails is, you know, beyond comprehension. And so uh, certainly thoughts with, with you and, and with the community in uh, this, this crisis, because I think quite often the language, the discourse, focuses on sort of a generic type of a person, a generic Canadian or American or Australian, and there's some variations, but to recognize that entirely different knowledge structures that are uh, created in a different way than what many of us might have grown up or been accustomed to are also under direct a threat and a direct threat. And I think as consequentially, quite often the impact is far worse because of the inequalities that already exist within those environments and often the lack of access to proper health care or, or proper support as that's the case. So, uh, you know, I think that's such an important perspective that you bring. From your experience then, we're, we're talking about entire schools, entire universities that have been forced online. How is that impacting from what you've observed, the Aboriginal population? And what kinds of lessons do you have for educators who are serving that particular population? Well, I wrote about this, I wrote a paper, which I can forward to you and your colleagues and, and, and students and so on, but um, about uh, the, uh, the digital futures across the Pacific. And uh, in that paper about two years ago, I was sort of trying to come up with a definition of what the digital future would be looking like drawn on the experience of um, uh, Aboriginal and Indigenous peoples um, and uh, minorities across the Pacific. And um, so, you know, one of the first things that, that the paper does is tries to outline the digital divide and, and uh, the social inequalities. Um, we know that in Australia that, um, uh, that um, uh, 30% of Indigenous Australians, mostly in remote and rural areas, don't have access to the internet. And um, yet the, gra the, the fastest growing um, uh, Indigenous um, individual 
that is using the internet is um, is the ages between 15 and 25. Indigenous peoples are the poorest of poor across the Pacific, particularly. Um, uh, and yet, um, uh, most uh, youngsters uh, across the Pacific, and including Aboriginal children, are the most uh, the most well equipped. They uh, they're the poorest of poor. Um, yet uh, they are spending most of their money on a mobile phone. The internet and digital education is only accessed through one device, and that's the mobile. And you simply can't do homework on a mobile. And so we know that uh, there is digital ghettos in, uh, in and across the Pacific with Indigenous Australians. We know the social inequality through um, uh, you know, at least 20 years of data now of where the digital divides are occurring. But we also know that Indigenous Australians are the fastest users than the non-Indigenous Australians. Um, I, the fastest uptake of online learning and online devices. So we're seeing this insatiable appetite by the poorest of poor, um, uh, yet, um, and some of these communities are highly illiterate Yet they are finding their way around a Google iPhone uh, within hours of, in, of, of coming into contact with one. Uh, it, this is just extraordinary. And now our community in a post-COVID environment is now viewing the internet as a critical source to dialogue with one another as we socially isolate from our communities and our elders. Most of our community now are, 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 are tapping into our elders online. So now the elders who were initially reluctant was very, very skeptical initially of the digital um, online learning and now really welcoming uh, ways to preserve our culture, preserve our knowledges that date back prior to the pyramids being built of um, how you live, you know, lightly on the earth and, um, you can live without coal and you can live without oil. Um, you can reproduce and live from the land sustainably without crops. So we've got, we've got this knowledge. Um, so we know that there are vulnerable individuals without basic internet and access or skills to use it. However, um, we now have a new uh, frontier whereby we can include the aspirations of minorities across the Pacific and ensure that their digital futures meet their aspirations rather than assimilate them into somebody else's agenda which colonization has occurred. That's a really critical point and, and you yourself, you, you travel extensively, you're internationally regarded in your area of work. How do you find for yourself then as, as a, an Aboriginal man who uh, intersects uh, extensively globally, uh, how do you find your own use of technology in your teaching and in your research practices? Uh, you're, you're better equipped than many because you've lived more of a, uh, you know, a diverse traveling lifestyle. Uh, how, do you, how have you coped and what have you done to be effective in your ongoing practices as an educator? So you're right. Um, uh, it's a really important question. I've been in, I've been invited to work in Taiwan, um, Fiji, uh, uh, Samoa. Um, I'm working in Hawaii, um, and Aboriginal Australia, in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So the stretch is wide. And one of the key things that um, the the Pacific really teaches you as a scholar is that it's the cradle of humanity. It's where humanity was born. And, and it's been doing humanity for such a, a, a long time. And what happens is um, some of my data and data of my colleagues have captured the very first time the internet came into the Pacific. So where, um, where the new age meets the stone age, if you like. And we found some really fascinating, interesting things that um, is when you, the, the Pacific, the cradle of humanity meets the latest technology we find an initial stage of rejection and uh, fear and like most uh, humans do when they encounter new things. But now what we've found is the, um, the, the, the Pacific can ameliorate some of the conditions that the non-Indigenous and Indigenous peoples are finding. For example, the Pacific is home to some of the worst education systems in the world. For the last 200 years since colonization, we haven't been able to improve education 
um, uh, in grade seven in, in uh, New Zealand and, and, and Australia, Aboriginal and Māori children are dropping out of primary and secondary school by, by grade seven before they even get into high school. One of the other interesting things is that um, across the Pacific, Indigenous peoples and non-Indigenous peoples enrol at the same rates at early, in their early childhood, in kindergarten and preschool. However, we know that that starts to bounce out around 30% of failure rates of schools not delivering school, uh, schooling to um, these, these children by the time they hit to grade seven. And so when they get into uh, high school, first year, second year, their, um, their uh, absentee rates are around about 60%. So what we're seeing at the moment is a great uptake by young uh, children, adolescents and uh, Aboriginal youth. And um, what we're seeing is a, 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 a con contributing to uh, a new way of thinking, a new way of um, digital futures and possibilities. And I think that um, what we're going to do is we're going to start to reimagine what school looks like in a digital world and what the image of the child is. One of the things that the digital education age is putting to bed is the sort of deficit views of Aboriginal or Indigenous children across the Pacific. And we know that they, they speak, uh, you know, more, you know, more than three languages. We know that they um, have cultural intelligences and multiple intelligences. And when they go to colonial schools that only speak English, um, uh, they are, um, their intelligences are left on the classroom floor because of the pedagogies that we use. What we're finding is innovative digital ways there where old teachers now are, are using digital ways to turn indigenous children on. And so this is really rethinking the image of the Aboriginal child as unintelligent, as needy, and as, uh, as, as, uh, as, a, as a sort of a disembodied learner. Um, so, uh, we have now new pedagogies and methodologies and assessment techniques through the, 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 the digital area. Not suggesting that the digital divide is solved yet, yeah. but we are moving in right directions to make a real difference in the Pacific. And I think uh, with colleagues in your work um, uh, and uh, others in our field, we're really starting to theorise the untheorised in the Pacific. That's a, a fantastic note on which to end. Uh, I love the optimism of that mindset. Certainly COVID has a tremendously negative impact on society, but in, in instances like this, the, it does in some ways help potentially at least accelerate in a positive way the use of technologies where the playing field hasn't been systemically stacked against a certain population as much as it is in say pre-digital kinds of settings. So Irvina, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us today. It's a terrific insight and appreciate you taking the time. Can I just uh, finish on one good example? Is Absolutely. That there's an island in the Pacific where the green turtles mate and it's very hard to get to. And the local school are tracking the, 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 my, the migratory patterns and the mating patterns of the green turtle. And uh, that island is uh, slowly being washed away and being covered by water. In, in the next six months, it's, it'll cease to exist. And we're not sure where the green turtle population will go to have their babies. But we've assured that the local indigenous community and the local school is trying to save the planet's green turtle population. And I think that this is hope and cause for optimism that a school can change the face of a nation and schools do the work of humanity. That's a terrific way on which to end. So again, thanks very much. Take care.